Have you ever wondered why your erections work the way they do? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and I'm gonna cover exactly what happens in terms of blood flow when you have an erection and how issues with blood flow can cause problems. In fact, vascular problems are the number one cause of erectile dysfunction in men. So what happens? Well, first of all, you need to understand the anatomy of the penis. So the penis is made up of corpora cavernosa, and those are the two spongy cylinders on the inside of the penis. They're covered by the tunica albuginea, which is a firm sheath that's around those tissues, which is then covered by skin. Interestingly, the tunica is actually noted to have the strength of steel. So it's actually quite, quite strong. Now, what happens during erections is first you have to understand the baseline state of the penis. At baseline, the muscles or the smooth muscles in the penis are contracted as well as the arteries to the penis are mildly contracted. And so it's got a mild oxygen state of about 30 to 40 milligrams of mercury. When you get aroused, the nerves or the cavernous nerve terminals will release a substance called nitric oxide. And that's why you'll often hear me say nitric oxide is the ignition for erections. When this is released by your body, the muscles relax and the arteries widen, which allows blood flow to flow in. This then begins to compress the veins that are around the penis that allows for the first phase of erection called the latent phase. And as the penis fills, the tunica albuginea, remember that wrapping that's as strong as steel, expands and pushes against additional veins, leading to the tumescent phase. Now, that's when you are pretty hard. Now, when those veins get flattened to the maximum potential, the inflow is maximal and the blood flow can't get out. And the pressure can go as high as 100 millimeters of mercury. Now, what this means is you are gonna have the most rigid erection or the rigid erection phase. Now, this is also a time when the ischiocavernosis muscles can have rhythmic contractions in response to this firm erection. And so that's essentially the muscles that are around the penis that causes this sort of rhythmic contraction. Erections are much more complex than just blood flow. But like I said, for this video, we're just going to focus on blood flow. So the initial D2 mesence, or the first part of losing an erection is typically when the arteries vasoconstrict or begin to get smaller so that the inflow starts to reduce. This then allows the veins to slowly open up and let the blood flow out. And this is called the late D2 mesent phase. And so this is all normal physiology. When the arteries have damage to them, like things like having heart disease where you get plaques in your arteries or high blood pressure when the vessels actually become a little bit thicker, making more resistance to letting blood flow through, this can can actually affect your penis before it affects anywhere else in the body, like your heart, because the arteries to the penis are significantly smaller than the arteries to the heart. This obviously can make it more difficult to get an erection because the blood has to overcome this increased pressure to get into the penis. Now, the interesting part about this is over time, this can cause the amount of oxygen getting into the corpora to be lower. So you're having less oxygen in those penile tissues. And this over a prolonged period of time, something called chronic hypoxia causes actual changes to the tissue. So you're actually getting more different types of factors like TGF beta and increased production of certain types of collagen fibers, which can eventually lead to fibrosis, which is essentially scarring of those tissues, which means that they can't expand as much and get as much blood flow into them to create the erection. And even when they do get blood flow into them, they don't expand as much because they're not as elastic. Now, this is a problem because a lot of people will say that my penis is shrinking, right? I'm not noticing that my penis is as long as it was when I was younger. Sometimes that's part of just having a larger body weight. If you have more body fat in the mons area or the area right above the penis, your penis will appear shorter. But also it can be because they're having erectile dysfunction and it continues to perpetuate and the oxygen in those tissues gets lower and lower and that's actually causing changes in the tissues. 
This is different from venous leak. And there's a lot of discussion about arteriogenic versus venous leak erectile dysfunction. So what exactly is venous leak? Venous leak is essentially when blood flow enters the penis, the veins don't get compressed well, or they are unable to compress well. So the blood just essentially leaks right out. So you may get a good erection, but it tends to go away very quickly. Now, the most common causes of this are things like trauma, maybe having something like Peyronie's disease where you get plaque formation in the penis. If you want to learn more about that, check out my video on curved penises where I talked about it. It can be due to priapism where you've had an erection that lasts longer than four hours and then you've subsequently developed some trauma or fibrosis to the area. It can also be due to those oxygen changes that we talked about due to arterial dysfunction then leading to venous leak. So you can sometimes have both together. And lastly, it can be due to congenital vascular problems. So if you have problems with your veins that you've had since you were born, it can also affect the ability to get erections. So typically what we find in particular patients who just present with venous leak is they're never really able to get a firm enough erection to penetrate. It's been that way for years and they very infrequently have nighttime or early morning erections. So in some people, what they'll see is that tunica albuginea has weakened or atrophied. And so it doesn't compress those veins quite as well as it used to. Now there's nothing we have that's going to firm up that tunica albuginea tissue, except for generally working on lifestyle, right? Anything you do to improve your health, your nutrition with exercise, that's going to help the health of your tissues all over your body, including your penis. Now, typically you can diagnose this with a penile Doppler ultrasound. However, penile Doppler ultrasounds are not perfect tests. They are very operator dependent and they can have false positives if you're having too much anxiety on the day of your test or if you don't get the right dose of medication. And typically they require you to get a pharmacologic erection. So, which means that you'll get an injection with medication into the penis that's going to make you have an erection. And so that in and of itself can create a lot of anxiety. And again, Again, like I said, it's very operator dependent. So many urologists, including myself, do not offer penile Doppler ultrasound because ultimately the treatment options are not different. Now I will say that certain things venous leak does not respond to well. So venous leak is not going to improve with shockwave therapy. It's not going to improve with PRP injections. And those are certain things that are certainly talked about a lot right now as regenerative therapies, but they are not shown to be beneficial in this patient population. Now things like medications work a little less often in these patients, but sometimes they do help. And so it's worth trying. You can try medications like PDE5 inhibitors. I've talked about sildenafil and tadalafil in other videos, so you can learn more about them. You could also use things like constriction bands or using a vacuum erection device, which will then help compress those veins so that you can sustain the erection for longer. Alternatively, you can try pharmacologic injections that you inject into the penis that can create erections that you do about 10 minutes before sex. And honestly, I think a lot of people get really nervous about the idea of injecting their penis, rightfully so, but I will tell you many of my patients have told me that it was nearly not as bad as they thought it was going to be. And they love the ability to get an erection relatively quickly when they feel the need to, and it's really not a huge of a pain as it sounds. And then lastly, there are surgeries like penile implants. And sometimes in patients with venous leak, we end up going to penile implant surgery sooner because these other options don't work as well. But I always encourage my patients to try as many of the other options as possible available to them before going to penile implants so they can really feel confident in their decision to have surgery. I've talked again about penile implants on prior videos, so check those out. You may have heard about things like vascular surgeries or embolization for venous leak. However, if you look at the data critically, basically they do show short-term benefit in terms of improving vascular flow and improving the ability to get and sustain erections. But after about 12 months, the success rate goes way down to about 25%. And there of course are risks associated with these surgeries that can include numbness of the penis and other sorts of negative side effects that are certainly not worth it for a 25% success rate, which is why you're going to be hard pressed to find a urologist that will offer something like that. Because as of yet, we have not seen the evidence that these are successful in the long term. Now, if you've had a recent trauma and you very quickly get seen, sometimes there can be benefit, but this is a very small subset of people. And 
to my knowledge, there's only a handful of surgeons in the country that offer these surgeries. So as always, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, let me know what else you want to learn about in the comments below. And if you want to see me as a patient, check out my website, www.renamalikmd.com. You can make an appointment there. I see patients in person in both Los Angeles as well as Newport Beach. And I can see you via telemedicine if you're located in a multitude of states, including New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Texas, Virginia, Illinois, Florida, and of course, California. And as always, I'm going to take care of yourself because you are.